in a game after a long summer? Yeah, no, it wasn't easier because uh, guys try hard like every time, every shift, and uh, sometimes it's not hockey, but uh, yeah, first game, but it, it wasn't that bad, but, but still be, still can be better. What does it mean to you that in your second camp that they put an A and a letter on your jersey? Yeah, I think uh, I should be leader uh, in this team. I think I, I show it in a game, and yeah, I, f I felt pretty good, and yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. Bad game. What were the most important lessons for you playing in the AHL last year in Utica? I think like uh, physics. Like the uh, physical game is is uh, more harder than I think than NHL or than other other leagues in Europe or everywhere. Did you find yourself improving as, as the season wore on, and in what ways? I think yeah. I I improved uh, my defensive game. Uh, Penalty kills and because like I didn't play penalty kills before, but last last year I played more than power plays and yeah I think I I find my way now. Was that some of the things that uh, Coach Dean was going over with you in the video work with his, his PK and your defensive zone play that type of thing? Yeah, we did a lot of a lot of videos and this stuff. Uh, sometimes they didn't put me on the power play because. Uh, they wanted uh, they wanted me focusing on a, on defensive zone and, and penalty kills and this stuff. Do you see a lot of European kids now making the jump quite early to the North American set of things in, in Europe? Why do you think that is? Yeah, because like it's a completely different sport uh, if you play in a small ring, uh, and yeah, I, I think it's sometimes it's, it's different sport. Is it much more valuable for everybody, or, or I guess it depends on, on the player. Or how you yeah, the the game is faster and uh, more chances, more points, and and that's it. The people people want want to see like uh, some chance and some goals, and yeah, here is here is uh, better than in Europe, I think. Uh, did you stay in the United States in the summer, or did you go back? No, I went back home. Off the ice, how did you like living in the United States? How did you feel about that part of? Your... It wasn't easier, but. Uh, yeah, it's better. I, I feel I feel more comfortable. My my language is better and yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel I feel better. Yeah, I was gonna say your English is a lot better. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you account for that? What, why is that reason? Because I didn't have some Czech or Slovak guy in Utica. <laughs> <laughs> no choice. Yeah. <laughs> did you live did you live with teammates last year? No, just myself. I like it, yeah. Oh right. you cook for yourself? Yeah, sometimes. What do you feel, Shimon, what do you feel you need to do to have a chance to maybe make the Devils roster uh, this year? Uh, I think sometimes I need to play more more safer. Uh, yeah, and more more pace, and I think that's it. Is that difficult for you to do? Mm, sometimes yes, sometimes no, but uh, yeah, I need I need more pre-season pre games, and uh, yeah, we will see what happens there. Yeah, I talk with him uh, a lot because, like, yeah, he's one of my my best friend. And, yeah, it wasn't easier for him for a season, but uh, now I think he's stronger, and uh, I hope I hope uh, he will be like healthy all year and and show some 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 good good stuff on the ice. You spend time with him in Slovakia no. no, with Mesher. I I, I train with Mesher. Um, what did playing at the World Juniors? mean to you last year just in terms of that experience it's uh, it's always good play for your country uh, and with guys you i know i know them from i was i don't know 10 maybe all of guys and it's it's always pleasure to play for for your country and and yeah it was great tournament but yeah we lost in quarterfinal and yeah i think we we could we could play better sometimes i was talking to Mesha last week and he was saying, if they got you back uh, for the tournament this year, he, he thought maybe Slavkovsky too, but we were like, maybe not. Um, <laughs> but with you know, if, if you guys all came back, uh, you'd have a pretty good chance at a medal. How do you feel about you know if you had the chance to play against the Slovakia, what what that group could do? Yeah, I think uh, it's in Sweden now. It's uh, it's more closer to to our country. 
I think a lot of fans uh, will come and uh, yeah, it will be it will be good because like we are such a good group, uh, a lot of good players. I think like 11 players drafted and yeah, but we will see. It's it's still three months, but you never know what happened. Who would you say was a mentor uh, for you last year when you were I think like many guys in the locker room, but uh, Waterspoon. I played with him all season. He's he's a really good player and and good mentor and. Yeah, but I think many guys tried to help me, and yeah. Did you feel as though your play was becoming more physical as the season wore on last year? Yeah, I think uh, I need I need to improve this this part of the game because you can play in North America if you don't know play physical, but uh, it's not still that good how I want. Uh, it was good. It felt fast. Um, I think I caught myself panicking a little too much with the puck early, just giving it up too early and not taking my space. So I um, thought I improved upon it a little bit through the game and um, hopefully looking to continue that throughout the weekend. Was it about finding a rhythm or was there something in particular you just didn't think you were doing at the beginning of the game? I think just spatial awareness. Like, um, you know, you, it's hard to replicate games like this in the summer. So um, just getting back into the swing of things and and kind of knowing um, where your teammates are going to be on the ice. Uh, it's also playing with some new guys. So um, just, yeah, just different than what I've been what I've been doing the last couple of months, basically. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's game one, looking to improve upon that throughout the weekend. What are you looking forward to in terms of where your game is at now versus maybe this time last year and what you have to offer? I would say just challenging myself against better players and seeing the growth that I've made since this time last year. Um, you know, putting yourself in the same situation – uh, a year older, a year stronger, a year more mature. Um, I think that kind of clarifies some of the steps you've made and, and then also some of the areas that you still need to improve upon to eventually get to the next level. Is that an evaluation you make after maybe these three games? Yeah. Game? Yeah, it's hard to be too um, uh, too critical, I guess, just of, of the games because it, it happens pretty quick um, and it's only one game, right? So um, you'll learn more just about your, about your, your group here and yourself um, throughout the weekend. When it comes to getting stronger, um, you know, sort of putting muscle on your frame, what's what's the plan? I, I imagine it's kind of a, a long-term plan at this point, sort of doing it incrementally. Yeah, obviously you don't want to put on too much, otherwise you lose kind of other aspects of your game that make you the player you are. So, I, you know, I don't want to put on too much weight and then lose some speed and, and agility. Um, but at the same time, in order for me to get to the next level, I'm going to have to put on some mass and strength just to be able to win more battles in the corners and, and not just be an off-puck player. Do you have kind of like a goal in terms of like what your ideal weight would be? Not really. you gotta, you got to play that by ear. Um, see how much it affects your speed and, and how much your body can put on in a healthy manner. You know, team performance versus looking at individual performances. So I kind of want to stick to that stuff. Was there anyone who really stuck out to you in this first game, knowing that guys yeah. Well, I think, uh, you know, the, I think the coach's natural tendency sometimes is to look how, how your overall team played. But uh, like every organization here, I think we have a great representation from our scouting staffs to our management teams to our NHL coaching staff. So I think, uh, you know, more than anything, you do begin to discuss and have uh, conversations about uh, players and uh, I think specifically guys that you've drafted you know we've got a few uh, that are here on uh, on tryouts and are getting an opportunity to to show themselves and hopefully earn our way into a um, um, invite to uh, the Utica camp but uh, with our draft picks you know obviously uh, a lot of eyes on on Clark and Nemich uh, and Stillman uh, given their draft status and uh, what uh, uh, we've done with them, and um, you know what? It got off to that first start. There's a lot of things that go into the course of the summer. Uh, we liked our energy overall, and I think specifically for those players early on, and uh, you know, certainly a little hiccup and a layoff in the second period, and uh, you know, that's part of the growth process. So uh, we would expect a, a little more consistent effort, and uh, uh, I think even in saying that, every one of those players also showed why they are picked where they are, why we uh, have them 
as as high priority players, and uh, we go from there. I think it's probably just his uh, pa- uh, panic point or l- lack of. You know, he gets that that puck, and he's uh, and it's one of his real strengths. But sometimes it works against him. He likes to have an idea and what his options are, and he likes to make good plays. And sometimes, as a defenseman, certainly uh, when he starts getting uh, NHL exhibition games, he he's going to get that feel as well that. Uh, you know, sometimes the best play is just to get it out and and uh, to live to fight it again. But uh, you never uh, fault a guy at this time of year when they're trying to make a statement and trying to make plays. So uh, I think that's a real strength of his. I think he's got a great shot. Uh, he took a good thump uh, early in the game, got right back out and dished a few out. So uh, um, my understanding is he spoke before me, and you can see there's been a lot of growth by him uh, on and off the ice. Uh, I just think by his performance and his maturity last year, he's a kid that came from overseas, got his own apartment, went out and bought a car, you know. I mean, hey, I, I've got 18-year-olds that don't, you know, could beat up on them a little bit, and uh, and we always do, and that's what the, I always say, that's what I really enjoy is, is just working with these young players and uh, just the growth we saw and the maturity that he showed at such a uh, a young age, we felt like putting a letter on him. It was an appropriate choice. When we were speaking to him, he talked about he still wants to keep working on the physical side of the game because it is more pronounced in yeah. North America. How, how do you work with a player on that? Is it a matter of just putting him in positions? And, I mean, in the ACL, obviously. He's yeah, hit, but yeah. How do you work with him? Well... I mean, for one thing, you guys have this lectern up here, so you didn't see the size of his bum and his legs. I mean, it's just, I mean, he looks like a hockey guy, right? I mean, you just look at his body, and I think there's that part to it. And I think, uh, uh, you know, did did Nick Lidstrom hit too many guys? You know, the, the uh, size of defensemen in the league, so... I think players, when they're young, they get that into their mind. That might have been the first thing he brought up. And, and maybe our defensive coaches would say, well, what about angles and using your stick? So I think there's a little bit of give and take with uh, the players. And that's what uh, those those conversations are about is, yep, you know, we like a, a big thumper like Musil showed he would like to be as a player. And uh uh, you know, Nemo certainly has the ability to do that. He's not shy. Uh, there's also ways that you can be very effective, and uh, uh, that doesn't play into it. Just because... Uh, Nico has a uh, Nemo has a uh, a tendency that uh, he feels to have an impact on the game uh, that there has to be a little bit of an offensive bend towards things and uh, uh, I think that's an area that we've had a lot of conversations with him about and he's a really mature kid that you can be a real impact player and you might not be on the scoreboard. Uh, you can uh, uh, go out there and kill penalties. No different than we did, you know, talking with Graham Clark over the last day or two, telling him that he's going to be killing penalties uh, in this thing. And I go back to uh, Rick Nash, who I was with in Columbus for uh, a little snapshot, and I think when he really developed as a player and really uh, turned into an all-around player is when, uh, you know, a first overall pick that was looked at as an offensive force all of a sudden was put in a role and a responsibility. You know what? you got to be able to kill. You're not out there to score. And I think that just kind of helps develop the uh, the mindset that you can be uh, a more well-rounded player. Why was Waterspoon a good part of the league? Uh, because just a level of maturity, you know, just a, a smart guy, a uh, depth of experience that he has. 
and uh, and not afraid to bark at him either. You know, when things happen, he's not shy, you know, letting him know. And I don't think that's in any way uh, being grumpy or anything along that line. It's, uh, you know, we're all in this together, and that's why we're excited. I think we feel like we have a, a, a valuable uh, veteran group in, in Utica and uh, where they really make an impact. Well, we expect it on the ice, but those small conversations make a big difference. Is he, clo- is he close, Kevin, to, to becoming an NHL regular, or do you still, there's still some maturity and growth needed here? Are we, uh, we're talking about Simone. I, I look at Shimon, we had that conversation uh, yesterday, and uh, Amanda and I were good. We were talking, and, and basically my feeling is, okay, uh, what are we looking at? Are we looking at the next six to eight months, or am I looking at the next 10 to 15 years? So I'm not worried about when it happens. I know it's going to happen just because he's such a dedicated, talented kid. Uh, but there's always steps, and I think in the NHL now, we do uh, put players into responsible positions much earlier than we have in the past, but uh, these kind of uh, learning curves and this growth is always, always important. So it's an exciting time for him, and uh, and certainly for us organizationally, we know we have a special player. Well, I, I, I love that he's trying to learn English. I think he's uh, he's got a... Uh, uh, a good um, teammate in Abragamov is there to kind of bounce a few things off him, and uh, I think those are always important things. But you saw the level of physicality that he had to his game. He also may have picked up in the last you know, seven, eight minutes when we were down. He made a high, high-end play. He looked the guy off and sauced it up to create a, an opportunity on the offensive side. So I think uh, there's a, a tremendous – we're really excited about our D. You know, we're going to have a lot of young D, but uh, uh, we're excited about um, what they can do as players.